Greetings, all! Today, we will be examining the relatively uncommon Poison Fire-type Pokémon Salandit and its exceptionally rare evolution Salazzle, collectively known as the Toxic Lizard Pokémon. Though the evolutionary pathway might be a bit frustrating for some to have to deal with, the members of the Salandit family are ruthless beasts that can both scorch and poison almost anything that dares to try and get in their way. Salandit have stout bodies covered in gray scales across most of their main torso, with darker black scales covering their tail, head, and their four quad-toed feet. Their back is marked with a wispy red streak near the tip of their long tail that extends into a series of four semi-bulbous protrusions on the lower back, and serves as a marker for where the internal poison and fire delivery systems are located. They have long snouts on their heads, with jagged, sharpened ends that assist them in tearing apart prey items and they have large, violet eyes with a traditional reptilian pupil form. Their evolved form, Salazzle, have a similar body form, though with a much longer torso, dark gray scales across most of their form, and a pattern of purple scales on the lower belly, with streaks of pink markings on their chest, belly, palms, and the bottom side of their tail. They now have five toes on each foot, which helps them move over terrain more effectively, and the streak of color once red on their back has turned a dark black color, with a pair of fleshy, whip-like extensions on their back that help them to release the chemical pheromones they use to control Salandit into the air. Their overall form, snout included, is much more streamlined, with their outer jaw fringes having sharpened to act in place of teeth more effectively, and they are noted for walking on their hind legs just as much as they do on all four limbs. The members of the Salandit family are unique among Pokémon for being the only dual poison and fire-type Pokémon known, and are able to make good use of this special mix of powers to make themselves a viable threat against many different types of opponents. In the case of both Salandit and Salazzle, these creatures have both their poison glands and combustion organs located near the base of their tail, and use an internal series of organic tubes to transfer the chemicals stored inside of them down the length of their tail, which is then released at its tip. These creatures are able to internally heat the poison inside of them to vaporize it and then release it as a sweet-smelling toxic gas that isn't entirely lethal on its own, but is capable of disorienting others and making them unable to properly defend themselves and, more importantly, is so alluring that it often has the effect of attracting prey items towards them. This makes it easier for them to then snack on the prey item or, if it is larger and stronger than what they can usually deal with, sets them up for a burst of flame to be released from their tail and palms to roast them and make them more ready for consumption. This gas helps to make up for the fact that these creatures do not learn many actual poison-type moves on their own, let alone many that deal direct damage, and it helps to tie in with their signature ability, Corrosion. Because these toxins are vaporized by the extreme heat given off by their combustion organs, they have the ability to enter the airways of other Pokémon and completely bypass their outer form, in turn allowing these Pokémon to poison any other type of Pokémon, even if the target is otherwise completely immune to the status condition by virtue of their type assignments. This alone can make these creatures a severe threat, as can their ability to possess the Oblivious ability as a hidden ability due to the way their social structure works, and with that said, it is noted that these creatures generally travel in large packs that are led either by a single female Salandit or a Salazzle, with the males all being subservient to their whims and desires. This also means giving the female leading their pack most of the food gathered, which results in the malnutrition of the males that prevents them from ever evolving. This makes Salazzle extremely hard to obtain, as the gender ratio of the family is skewed 8 to 1 in favor of males, but that just makes them that much more of a threat to have to deal with. In looking at their stats then, in the case of Salazzle, these creatures might seem intimidating, but their forms are actually somewhat frail and are unable to take much in the way of damage or deliver much in the way of physical harm, so most of their stats are below average for a fully evolved poison and fire type Pokémon. Thankfully, they are able to strike with noticeable force with special attacks and are deceptively fast as a result of their thin and sleek forms, so their base special attack and speed stats are above average for a fully evolved Pokémon of both of their types. As such, while they might not be able to take much in the way of damage, these beasts can strike swiftly and with considerable power from afar, and prove to be a toxic threat that even other poison types and steel types have to be wary around. As noted before, Salandit usually travel around in communal packs, but if they are not led by a female of some form, these groups tend to be little more than loose congregations of individuals, with the individual members hunting on their own and only coming together when traveling long distances or sleeping. Preferring to live in craggy volcanic environments, 
These creatures will usually only band together to make a group effort if they need to fight off an attacker or take down a particularly large prey item, and thus are not the most effective of fighters from a communal perspective. However, if there is a female Salandit present, or even a Salazzle, these beasts instinctively fall into order quite quickly and will obey whatever the female tells them to do. This is in due part because the females release a powerful pheromone from their tails from a third gland that is not present in males that allures other Salandit and effectively turns the males near them into slaves to their bidding by controlling their instincts. As a result of this, male Salandit are extremely weak by comparison and are never able to evolve as their bodies are biologically built to only be useful for reproduction and little more. This means that they usually cannot prove to be much of a threat against other creatures, even if they do get access to most of the same moves that Salazzo can get, but what they lack in power and evolutionary capability, they more than make up for in numbers, thus making any confrontation with a pack of Salandit one to take cautiously in almost all circumstances. When female Salandit reach the peak of maturity in their form and evolve into Salazzle, they gain a number of new moves as a consequence of physical changes that occur to their bodies and behavior following evolution. For one thing, these creatures stick to living in caves where they are safe from attack and start to adopt the use of bipedal movement in order to allure not just Salandit, but all other types of Pokemon in general and are able to do so quite effectively, which also frees up their front legs and allows them to learn the pound attack instead of the scratch attack normally learned by Salandit. In addition, the sweet smelling gas that they release from their tail and now the two ribbon-like extensions of flesh on their back is far more potent and is able to temporarily control not only other Pokemon in their family, but also most forms of life in general, and not surprisingly, it is often used in a diluted form to make incredibly luscious and potent perfumes. Combined with the emergence of a seductive and cruel personality, this allows these beasts to gain access to the Captivate technique immediately upon evolving, as well as the Disable, Encore, Torment, and Swagger techniques with a bit of help, helping to make them far more of a tactical threat than Salandit could ever be. In the wild, the commanding presence of these creatures leads them to constantly be surrounded by a reverse harem of male Salandit, and they answer to the females every beck and call. This even extends to mating, as instead of having anything resembling a mating season, Salazzle instead will simply mate with whomever they wish, whenever they wish, and the males are forced to do so or risk being attacked. Even then, the males are not completely safe, because if they cannot mate to the point of satisfying the female, or fail to bring them back food when hunting, they will likely get slapped hard across the face by a flame-spewing palm from these large lizards, and may face further repercussions if the failure is particularly bad. This can make these beasts fickle at best, and a handful to deal with sometimes, but they are nonetheless quite powerful and can certainly make themselves a threat if allowed to remain at a distance from one's Pokémon, as indicated by the fact that one once served as a totem Pokémon on Akala Island in the Alolan region, though it was eventually retired and replaced by an Alolan Marowak. Capable of scorching anything that dares to confront them, and poisoning almost any and all types of Pokemon, the members of the Salandit family are powerful beasts that can more than prove to be a deadly threat if not taken care of quickly. You might have to go out of your way in order to find a female that can actually reach a final state of evolution, but the reward can be more than worth it if you know how to use their agility and special powers to their fullest. Just do yourself a favor, and try not to breathe in too harshly when in the presence of these creatures. You might enjoy the sweet smell of their toxic gases and pheromones at first, but it is unlikely that such a favorite will last for long if you become the willing subject of a Salazzle's control and end up either as a meal or a mate that they will gladly abuse and utilize to fulfill whatever uncomfortable desires they may have. Thank you all for watching this video. It is always an honor to be able to speak with you all on the subject of Pokemon in a way that brings me great joy and happiness in my work. If you would like to keep tabs on past and future work, click that subscribe button, check out my work on DeviantArt, and don't be shy about following me on Twitter, where you can find pertinent announcements on upcoming work before it is officially posted. Links to both can be found in the video description. If you would like to support my work and help Miguel and I continue to produce more content for you and improve upon our presentation, please visit us at my Patreon page, which you can also find a link to in the video description. Yeah, no. With that, I thank you for watching, and I wish you well.